All right, hello. Hello, everyone. This is David from goldstartool.com, and this is a special video. See, nobody ever saw it in my face on my YouTube video. But I have a great, great opportunity to uh, introduce to you David Fife from Conto Corporation, a very, very good friend. I could call you a good friend. Yeah. And uh, he's here visiting us from New Jersey, the headquarters of Conto. And uh, he came here and he saw my place and I thought I'm gonna get David to sit down with me for five, 10 minutes. He had to make his flight by. And I'm gonna interview him for people to see. You know, it's very nice for people to see where your sewing machine coming from, who are the people. Not everything you buy is buying it from, you know, people that you don't know. We actually know the family and very good friends. So, um, thank you so much for sitting down, down with me. I, I'm going to ask you some questions that I came out with, and David, you know, uh, do you want to say hello? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. Uh, tell me a little, a little about yourself. Uh, myself? Well, I'm uh, 49 years old. Um, I've been with uh, Conso full-time for about 20 years now. Uh, before that, I was in finance uh, for, for a few years, and I worked at, worked at a bank. Um, and uh, you can usually find me in our New Jersey office, our, our headquarters, uh, where I'm taking care of uh, any one of uh, a million different things, sales, purchasing, technical support, uh, quality control, working with our mechanics, our salespeople, our uh, development team, uh, on new products, on existing products. Um, you know, I'm involved in all aspects of the business. And um, uh, that, that's me, yeah. So, so you went to school to... to I went to uh, NYU, uh, New York University um, in, uh, in New York. Um, I studied economics there. And uh, like I said, after that, I, I spent about five years in uh, finance before I uh, joined the, the company. Why did you join? I mean, I know this is a family, your father yeah. owned the company. Sure. But why did you, I mean... Why did I join the council? Yeah. I mean, uh, it was a combination of things. I mean, I saw a great opportunity uh, with, with the business. Um, I, I, I looked forward to the opportunity also to work with my father and my brother. Um, my you know, family business, it kind of, it grows in you. Mm -hmm. You know, you grow up with it. I mean, as a, as a kid, uh, my brother and I were always at the company. We were always helping out. My father would travel, uh, you know, sometimes for work and he'd leave us there. Uh, to, to manage the place, uh, you know, during Christmas vacation, spring break, uh, summer breaks. So, you know, it really becomes part of you. And so while I, I did want a different experience or a different to learn something else other than just the family business for a while, you know, after I'd been out of school for a few years, I, I decided to, to come back. Again, I think it was a combination of um, wanting to work with my family and also wanting, um, seeing opportunity to, to grow the company and, and to um, improve the company. So how did Conso start? So Conso, it's, uh, Conso the machine company started in 1898. Um, it's a more than 120 year old company. Um, the family part of our business um, was started by my grandfather in 1950. He was a Holocaust survivor and he started, uh, started the business and my father took over uh, and my father bought Conso in uh, 1995 um, from another uh, larger corporation. And so um, we have, uh, in our uh, organization, we have a, a company that sells parts and supplies for the sewing industry. Um, we have some other machine companies and we also, uh, you know, the biggest part of our, our business today is, is Conso, uh, which we've owned since, like I said, since, since 1995. And why would you tell people to buy console over any other sewing machine? You know, for us, the, uh, the, the tagline on our, on our stationery is that the quality goes in before the name goes on. And so we have a, a long history of supplying, you know, the best uh, or among the best quality uh, sewing machines in the industry. You know, our niche is um, we don't necessarily cater to every, every little subsection in, in the industry, but we focus primarily on heavy duty applications. So that could be um, upholstery, auto interiors, tents, tarps, fabrics, uh, government uh, type applications. Um, but we specialize in all, a full variety of walking foot and other 
uh, type of application for uh, the heavier duty industry. We have a complete line, but that's you know where uh, where Tonsil is most well known in the uh, in the heavy app in heavy duty um, industry. So you're not really. I mean, you have uh, light material going, but you're more. Our, our, what we're most well known for is for the heavy. the heavier applications, walking foot type machines, um, and, uh, and and those types of applications. Yeah. Um, what is your top five selling machine? So our, our number one seller is the uh, two hundred six RB dash five. Um, it's at the fifth variety version now, um, but it's been uh, this 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 model has been in production for about twenty years now. Um, hasn't changed a lot. Um, you know, our, one of our, our probably second or third best seller today is, is the machine that we have uh, behind us. It's a, a comparable to a 206, but it's uh, got a little bit more work workspace. It's the 2206, um, and it's fully automatic. So you have uh, all kinds of programmable functions. So it kind of takes the best features of the 206, and it improves on it um, by giving the user uh, thread trimming, automatic back tack, the uh, electric to foot lift, um, and the ability to, to program the, the machine to do a lot of different things. Um, then we also have, I would say, uh, the next most popular, we have the, uh, there is a combination, single needle and double needle, 255 RB-3 yeah. and the 339 RB-4. These are standard um, single needle and double needle walking foot machines that can be used um, in, in the industry. Um, we have a cheaper model uh, that we've introduced that's also one of our, our best sellers, the P1206 RV. It's now a dash one. It's, it's changed uh, one time. What, what do you call that line? That's the Premier line. Premier line. So that's the best selling model in the in the Premier yeah. line. It's similar to a 206. It's a less expensive, uh, it, it's kind of a lower end price point. Um, so that's three or four uh, of the uh, of the top sellers. Um, you know, after that, Two to eight or no, forty pairs. Just wait. Again, we have a, a complete line. I'm thinking, uh, you know, what's uh, what, what would necessarily be the uh, the best uh, the best seller. I mean, we do sell a lot of single needles, just regular single needles. That would yeah. be our seventy three sixty um, R dash two SS. So again, it's a basic plain uh, sewer, um, basic machine that we we also offer. Supply and chain and China and COVID. Since COVID happened, yeah, a lot of problems with. Sure. You're yeah, I mean, look, we're, we haven't been immune to the supply chain issues, but in, in, in all honesty, you know, the way we operate our, our business as a family owned company, we've never been afraid to, to carry a lot of inventory, as you know. Yeah. And so when, uh, when our competition was out of stuff, a lot of times we, we've had merchandise, we've had machines. Um, you know, again, with certain models, uh, the lead time has gotten longer. We've had trouble getting, a, you know, a few of the specialized machines where, you know, parts are, it can be hard to come by. But for the most part, you know, we've done pretty well through COVID keeping inventory and having inventory when, when, when a lot of our, our competition um, has it because we're, we're not afraid to keep it in stock. You know, as my grandfather used to say, you can't sell from an empty wagon. And so we've, you know, we've always had um, a lot of inventory, the 206, the P1206, 2206, you know, these are, um, the basic machines that we carry, you know, we generally do keep in, in stock. And so, you know, while the lead times have gotten a little bit longer, you know, we've we've been able to, to supply our customers because we've had them, you know, in our in our warehouse. Uh, so this supply and chain is really everyone's problem right now. I mean, we we also, as you guys know, we do also do do take uh, brand our own sewing machine, and we do a lot of food store tools. Uh, Hardware and tools, and you know, pretty much everybody's having problems, even other brands. But um, Michael and Congo are the one that I, I have seen that they really push to get merchandise to come to USA. And you know, uh, we've been working with them, we have a good relation, and I hope we continue to buy more and more uh, from you guys and sell. Warranty. What about warranty? How do you yeah, our, our standard warranty is um, it's 90 days, um, which I think is standard in the industry. Um, when you look at Juki, Brother, other um, other other companies, and we've looked extensively at, a, at our competition and what the industry. Um, and so our 
our, our standard warranty is, is it's 90 days um, for factory defects. And so we, you know, you know, we stand behind our equipment. We always have, um, you know, if there's a problem, we're going to take care of it. We'll either repair the machine or replace it. Um, but we, we're known for standing behind. Oops, sorry. Okay. You know, standing behind uh, the, the, the equipment um, and making sure that the customer is happy. What did Conco make? I mean, majority. Yeah. Yeah, the majority of our machines do come from China. Again, it's it's a global supply chain like others. So, you know, when you look at the 206, for example, there's a lot of Japanese components. Again, the, you know, our top sellers, you know, we supply, you know, we source supplies from Japan, um, from the USA, from other other um, areas. But, um, you know, when you look at some of the cheaper lines, it's gonna be more Chinese parts um, than, you know, some of the more expensive ones. But um, you know, the vast majority of the machines are assembled and do uh, have, you know, a majority of the parts uh, that are made in China. Uh, any authorized for, I mean, centers in USA, let's say, we, we, have, get, we yeah. get calls from all over the world, we in the USA and you have somebody calls you in the middle of nowhere in the USA, because yeah. I want to buy a console, I want to know if you have anybody, if something goes wrong, you know, you have somebody that could fix the right. machine. Right, so we have about 600 um, active um, dealers and distributors throughout the United States. Um, and any, most of them are, are capable and authorized to repair machines. You know, the way our industry works, as you know though, it's not like the auto industry, where if you buy a, a product, a car, you can take it to any dealer. You know, generally you have to buy, you have to go to the dealer that you bought the machine from. Now, if it's beyond the warranty part and you're just looking for service, then you can take the machine to, to any authorized dealer and they'll charge you um, to repair it. And it's good to know, I mean, one of the, I think one of the reasons that people do buy Conso is because they know our equipment. Like I said, the 206 RB5 has been in production for, it hasn't changed a lot in 50 years. All of those independent dealers and and know that machine well and can fix it. And not only are genuine parts available, but there's a lot of generic after, aftermarket parts that are available for that machine that keep the maintenance cost of that machine low. You know, a lot of the, if you buy new equipment, you know, the, the independent dealers don't know, you know, the off-brand, uh, what the parts are. And so you, you're, you're limited with what parts you can, can get and who knows that machine. But with Conso, you take a 206, you know, the vast majority of industrial sewing machine dealers around the country can repair a 206 and generic parts are available. All right, question. I mean, I wrote this question, I'm pretty, but I have a lot of more questions. Uh, uh, what are the other brands that Conso? So Conso in our organization, Conso is the biggest. Um, that's, you know, our industrial sewing, uh, sewing machine uh, division. We also sell uh, Chandler. Um, sewing machines, that's known uh, more in the dry cleaning industry. Um, and it has a, a line of uh, sewing machines, a blind stitch machine, a button, uh, a button sewing machine, hand crank button sewing, also automatic uh, button sewer like the, like the Juki. Uh, but really uh, primarily uh, geared to the dry cleaning industry. Um, we sell Meistergram embroidery machines. So that's our commercial line of industrial uh, uh, embroidery equipment. You know, so it's going to be anywhere from a single head compact uh, 15 needle embroidery machine up to an 18 or 20 head uh, embroidery machine that's going into a large factory. But so we have Meistergram, uh, Chandler, Conso. We recently, uh, in the last couple of years, added US Blind Stitch to our line, uh, which is uh, industrial blind stitch machines. A company, again, with a long history that's known. Um, in, in, in the industry that we're now making new U.S. blind stitch uh, sewing machines. Um, and then recently we also added uh, Clinton, uh, which is uh, labor saving, uh, time saving devices. So uh, they'll put air foot lifts on uh, the back of any machine. They have cutters that you can put on different uh, machines and other types of uh, labor saving devices that, um, you know, so they always they, they're not necessarily attached to one brand of machine, but the, they work to put um, again labor-saving devices on the back of any any, any, any machine. So this is our family of companies. It's grown over the years. We have unlimited parts, which is our parts and supplies business, and then, like I said, now Conso, Chandler, Meistergram, um, U.S. Blind Stitch, Clinton, um, and hopefully we'll continue to grow. You sew? 
Um, I don't sew. Um, I can sew. Um, you know, I. But you cannot do a garment. I don't know. I wouldn't know how to make a garment. But I, you know, I'll, I'll, I get involved with our mechanics in terms of testing uh, machines, and so I certainly, you know, thread my share, my fair share of machines, and then we'll sew them off and make sure everything's working, uh, working right. But in terms of making uh, making a product, I'm not a uh, an operator in that way. Um. I just, we, you did a show in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I came to that show, a uh, trade show, sewing uh, uh, machine trade show, and I, uh, beside Tonto, everybody pretty much got into digital, mm -hmm. computerized sewing machine. Right. Big, huge platform, automatic, automated sewing machine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you have company like this one, is the most, probably, um, but everyone else, is into it. Like are which, you guys? Uh, like what type of uh, machine do you? Like I'm talking about like, let's say bar tanking machine. Right. Let's say with big platform for you know, yeah. or even like regular. Uh, let's say um, everything is now computerized. Yeah. Automated. So, yeah. I mean, so we don't. Console doesn't have a bar tanking machine. Um, it's not something that we've uh, we've ever gotten into. We'll, we we continue to look at it, and you know I would say keep your ears uh, open. You know it's possible that we'll we'll have a bar tacking machine at some point, but um, at this point we don't have a big programmable bar tacking machine like a Juki or a Mitsubishi uh, bar tacker. But um, I, I agree with you that more and more of the equipment is is um, programmable. So again, whether it's the twenty two hundred six, we have a a new uh, line of uh, equipment P. 1510 and P1560. Um, again, these are uh, walking foot, single needle, double needle machines, direct drive, you know, with trimmers, with uh, uh, electric foot lifts where you can uh, do the programming. I mean, the industry is clearly moving to, you know, I think what's happened is the cost of those electronics has come way down. And so yeah. it's, you know, it's much more affordable to the every, everyday user to be able to add um, a machine like like this one with the electronics compared to a regular machine. So, you know, you certainly still have a majority of people that want just a plain machine, but more and more, um, the programmable features um, are becoming popular. Um, one question that I, when I, whenever I sell a sewing machine, I'm uh, one of the main guys, obviously I have a lot of uh, assistants that help us. We do a bunch of very, you know, devoted people that whenever we get called to sell sewing machine. One of the questions that people ask us, if whenever something goes wrong, can't you have a set uh, phone number that you could call in like any other, you know, brand that you say, hey, my needle doesn't come up or my thread doesn't catch. Right. I mean, we have it here, we answer for can't we do for Juki, I mean, we sell all other brands, but people feel more comfortable if they know that somebody sitting and they could answer, do you have anybody that could? Right, so, you know, what I would say, say to that is we have, um, you know, five full-time technicians on staff in New Jersey that are, that are available, but we don't sell direct to the end user. We rely on the dealer, someone like yourself, to interface directly with the, with the, Cut. With the customer. Um, and the other dealers are also that we sell to, and they, they know that. We're, we're not set up um, to, like, uh, I mean, you know, if you buy a Ford and you have a problem, you don't call Ford, yeah. you know, when you have a question. You call the dealer that you bought it from. And we, it's, it's a similar type of, uh, type of approach. Again, we have the, the technical staff. We have technical staff in China um, at the factories. Um, we have mechanics that work for us that test and repair machines that help us with product development. So if there's a question that you have, you know, we have resources to be able to answer that, but we can't, we're not set up to handle the, you know, oh, I, I don't remember how to thread the machine, you know, call Tonto. That's yeah. not, that's not, we're not yeah. set up with that type of customer service. No, but one of the things that I really, really liked about Tonto and David is that uh, I, there are days that I probably emailed David or called him maybe more than 10 times and he returned the call or replied to the email within minutes. I mean, like one or two minutes. Uh, obviously, he drops it a lot of stuff from New Jersey because when an order comes in from, let's say, New York or Chicago or Atlanta, 
it's much easier to get shoes from New Jersey. And we feel very comfortable, they do a great job. We save money with shipping. I mean, imagine if we have a ship from across country from New Jersey to California, then we have to ship it back to New York or New Jersey, we just have them drop ship it. So we're in constant contact. And they're really reply to every email. Yes, there is problems sometimes, once in a while, there's something breaks and they always replace the item. Now, this is the um, great opportunity to yeah, work with we, we do, you know, I mean, we, we do feel that service is the name of the game. I mean, you know, you have to provide a service and you have to, like I said, be, be there for the, for the customer. Again, you know, what, you know, you're my customer, you know, so like you said, I'm, you know, 24 seven, we you know, within fun. minutes, um, you know, again, yes. I'm there to answer uh, the questions and provide the support. And if we need to get involved with the end user, we can, uh, but that's not what our primary focus is. Am I paying in the box? Sometimes. We are. It's good to call <laughs> and It's fine, it. you know, but look, I, I, would you, should I lie? No, no. I mean, look, we have a, like you said, we're friends, we have a good relationship. I enjoy working with you. I think um, in any business, right, and it, there's always going to be headaches. If you don't have headaches, then, you know, it's, then probably, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the, the positives far outweigh the negatives. Um, you, you, I gave you a tour of our company. This is yeah. the first time that you yeah. came here. How do you like, what do you see? What do you think about uh, Gold Star Tool? And you have an amazing operation. I mean, really, uh, you know, from you know, little um, uh, snaps and rings to, you know, the most uh, heavy duty type of industrial equipment. You kind of have a have a range. You've got three or four locations. Um, and somehow you kind of manage all, all of it and all of the people and, uh, and, and, and do a phenomenal job. And, you know, I mean, you, know, you, you quickly become, you know, one of our best customers. And like I said, I, mean, I enjoy working with you and I look forward to continue working with you. But, yeah. you know, you got an amazing setup here. It's it's, it's, I work with Dave, and I work with Michael, his brother, and uh, Mike, I mean, David's father, uh, Mr. Fife, and uh, knock on wood, we have a great, I mean, we do big then I work again, you know, the whole nine yards, but it's amazing to know these families. That, you know, they're family-oriented company. So, um, and I have what I told them many, many times. It's when I get called, um, if somebody comes and says, I'm looking for 206 RV, what do you think? Listen, I could give them something else and make more money, but I found my promise to uh, counsel and fight on family had been that I would never bait and switch. I am not in the business to, hey, bring him in, hey, I have something cheaper for you. I think if somebody is calling for console to a 6 RV, I'm going to send them to a 6 RV. Now if they tell me they want something, you know, I would call them, hey, the guy is doing two inch, two inch of living, what, if, what else do you have? So I think it's give and take. It's a street that goes, you have, what do you call it? A street that's two way street. Two way street. Yeah. You know, we respect each other, we call each other all day night, we spend, you know, Four days in LA, came to I saw our operations, and uh, what do you think this is gonna happen like 10 years from now? A lot of people tell me, hey, you know, is there a, is going to be any sewing machine 10 years or 20 years from now? You would think that they put fabric in a machine, you know, in a machine and from the other end. I mean, I mean, you know, look, I, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, one of the things that we've seen is with some of these supply chain issues, there definitely are opportunities because factories are opening up here and yes. they do want more. There, there is a movement to move some production back yes. to North America, some of it may be Mexico or, or the United States, but that's opportunity for, for us. So where, you know, maybe a few years ago, everyone was moving everything overseas. Now there's, they, the there is talk. Years, there's there's is. talk and there, there are companies that are making investments yeah. in, in, uh, in, in put setting stuff up here. So, I mean, in terms of the automation, like I said, I think there will be more and more automation because the cost of the electronics comes down um, and will continue to come down and people will be more comfortable with it. Um, I don't think, you know, it's going to be fully automatic, but you're going to just press a button and a garment's going to be made. You know, the way the sewing machine and the stitching has to be done uh, probably 
you know, is, isn't going to get to that point in the next five to ten years. But there will be more automation, um, and uh, there will be more, more, uh, hopefully, more made here, more manufactured in the United States. Uh, by the way, Council wants me to carry one of their machines. That you know, we started this uh, uh, this um, towing center showroom. I mean, it's not done, but we're going to have more machines from uh, Council set up here so people could come in and try the sewing machine. If you're in LA or in, you know you want to make a trip, you know we're gonna have by hopefully within a couple of months we're gonna have much more yeah. sewing machines. Yeah, we have a beautiful showroom right here. We can, plenty of space. If anyone wants to come and see a machine, whether it's Conso or another brand, I mean you know you have they're set up and ready to ready to test. Yes. Yeah. You have an operation where you know a customer can come in and, and try out different models, and you know I would certainly recommend they do that. Yeah. Any any last word before you hit the road and go back to New Jersey? New Jersey. No, no, it's been a pleasure spending a little bit of time with you. Obviously, we saw you a couple months ago as yes. well, and you know, hopefully, we'll see you again soon. So, we we'll done. Show. SEO people and YouTube people, please tag console. Make sure that, anyway, you go. I mean, when you test console, we are number one. Yes. Right? right. Yes. So this is gonna make it even better. So uh, hashtag console, and so we could, you know. Post the video as soon as we can. Thank you so much for your time. Really yeah, pleasure you. to know you yeah. and do business with you guys. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Woo! Okay, let's do that one too. Awesome. Oh. Three, yeah.